Hi everyone and welcome to every episode of Family Guy Season 5 Reviewed. This season is much shorter, coming in at 18 episodes, compared to the mammoth 30 episodes last time out. The show seems relatively settled around this time. The show had been on the air for a while after its cancellation, and things seemed to be settling into a nice groove. I really enjoyed season 4, so if this season carries on in the same vein, I'm a happy man. Again, thanks to the viewers who watch this series and the channel. If you could show some support with a like and subscribe, I would, as ever, appreciate it. As an aside, one of my viewers, a thank you to him, has created what I would call, I guess, an informal Discord server for this channel. A place where you could ask me questions or maybe talk in more detail than I do on YouTube. So if you're interested in joining that, I'm sure he'll leave a link in the comments for you. With that said, let's take a look at the episodes. First up we have Season 5, Episode 1 Stewie Loves Lois After Lois saves Rupert, Stewie develops an attachment to her. However, he soon becomes too clingy. Meanwhile, Peter undergoes a prostate exam and thinks his doctor molested him. My best cutaway here was Stewie testifying against Michael Jackson. And my best moment was Stewie annoying Lois by calling her name over and over again. The season starts with a 4 out of 5. This gave us a new dynamic to the Stewie and Lois relationship. Stewie suddenly idolises her and becomes overly dependent. After she quote unquote saved Rupert for him, what it does work at is showing us how impressionable Stewie still is and how this so-called hatred he has for Lois is not actually that deep-seated at all. It also has some relatable problems for the characters to go through, like Stewie's jealousy and Lois's exhaustion at having to deal with such a clingy baby. It was just a nice little plot, which we were bound to get at some point. Peter's subplot of thinking he was raped after getting a prostate exam was complete silliness, but it had some funny moments. Like Peter going home crying with his pants down, all her ridiculously dramatic court scenes, which both Peter and the judge imagine. Sure, Peter was a complete asshole trying to get Dr. Harmon locked up, but at least he learned his lesson in the end. Kind of. Other funny moments here include the racist Kermit in the Louisiana swamps, and Stewie kidding around in court while testifying against Michael Jackson. And as mentioned, Stewie calling Lois by all those different names over and over again is a classic, iconic Family Guy scene. Season 5, Episode 2 Mother Tucker Peter's parents get a divorce, and his mother starts dating Tom Tucker. Meanwhile, Brian and Stewie get their own radio show. My best cutaway here was Darth Vader as a meter maid. And my best moment was Peter and Tom Tucker going to dinner at the fast food restaurant. And you can see exactly what that entailed with the picture on the left there. Tom sure is a strong man, isn't he? Being able to carry Peter around like that. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. Just a silly one all round this. All, and I mean all, of the best moments came from the farcical situation of Tom Tucker acting as Peter's dad. Peter acting like a child works surprisingly well it comes off as silly and funny, instead of cringy. The scenes of them at the restaurant, or Peter trying to sneak ice cream, worked better than they had any right to. Aside from that though, the actual character stuff was disappointing. I never cared much for Peter's mum, so her relationship with Tom, or her breakup with Peter's dad, never meant anything to me. At least Quagmire's reaction to seeing her was good. Ooh indeed. The radio plot was kind of stupid. I mean, some of Stewie's prank calls at the start were okay, but once he joined the show, it was all a bit too exaggerated to be funny. The cutaways weren't the best here, but I did like the bizarre origin story for Darth Vader. The scene where he is standing depressed in a shower, with his helmet still on, is great, you must agree. Still, as an overall package, this is about as average as a Family Guy episode can get. Season 5, Episode 3, Hell Comes to Quahog. 
After Peter buys a military tank with Meg's money, she's forced to get a job at the newly built superstore. But soon, the store starts causing the town problems. My best cutaway was Peter taking an Asian kid instead of a calculator to the SATs. And my best moment was Peter, Joe, Quagmire and Cleveland at the roller disco. I gave this one a 4 out of 5. I mean, there's nothing too special here. Just some shenanigans with a tank in the first act and a mega store taking all the town's resources in the second. But it's still entertaining almost all the time with many moments I found funny. The opening set piece of the gang at the roller disco was great. The dances they all do and the hilarious visual of Joe with the skates on his hands. I love those little scenes of Peter and his friends just hanging out and having fun together. I find them to be more relatable on a human level than pretty much anything else which ever happens on a show. Also, Peter's got some moves, you can't deny that. Peter's negotiation over buying the tank went about as well as you would expect. And his comment to Joe, you look like a half-empty toothpaste, was exactly the type of insensitive yet funny remark Peter is known for. The bits about Meg being Peter's boss at the superstore were okay, but not much time was devoted to it. The best scene was Peter making fart sounds with his tongue whenever someone said Meg. I love how he varies the length of the sound based on how drawn out the word Meg was. The final scene of Brian and Stewie using a tank to destroy the store was good. Those two certainly weren't messing around there. As far as the cutaways, the Iceman one was okay, but the on-the-nose stereotype of Peter pulling out an Asian kid to do his math work for him was the pick of the bunch. Add on some mild satire about this big superstore harming communities and putting local stores out of business, and you have a relatively solid episode. Season 5, Episode 4, Saving Private Brian. After Chris is approached by an army recruiter, Brian goes to complain, but he and Stewie end up getting enlisted themselves. Meanwhile, Chris joins a goth rock band. My best cutaway was the Wizard of Oz granting wishes. And my best moment was Brian and Stewie's attempts at trying to get out of the army. This one gets a 3 out of 5. And it just scrapes the 3 as well. Mostly on the back of a few good jokes and some okay moments between Brian and Stewie. The bit about Stewie signing Brian up for the military against his will didn't make much sense of course. I mean a baby and a dog can get on the military just like that apparently. No questions asked. The episode never really got into the impact the war was having on things on a macro scale, but it did allow for a few understated character moments between the two, like Stewie trying to encourage Brian by reminding him that he has a habit of quitting things halfway through, and it seems to hit home for Brian, as he does buckle down and finish his, albeit rather farcical, training. The other scenes I liked were them shooting each other in the foot, and how Stewie tried to weasel his way out of it, as well as Stewie being a bit too over-enthusiastic about making out. Too bad for them though, they still couldn't get a honourable discharge. Chris's rebellious phase, where he is in this band, was decent, mainly for the weird Marilyn Manson appearance at the end. Despite all this though, the episode simply wasn't as funny as I'd have liked. There were also a few moments which dragged on, all these things combined, make this the least fun out of the four episodes so far. Season 5, Episode 5, Whistle While Your Wife Works. Brian tells Stewie that he has been dating a girl named Gillian, but is reluctant to let him meet her. Stewie soon discovers why. She is a stereotypical dumb blonde. My best cutaway was the gang hanging out with the big horn guy from Legend. And my best moment was Shuey's conversation with Gillian. I gave this one a 4 out of 5. Brian getting this dumb girlfriend at least provides some interest, mostly in how he deals with her and how he fears being judged by his family for being with her. Some of Shuey's teasing was quite fun, how he keeps trying to dig a bigger hole for Gillian just to embarrass Brian, but Lois is one to talk given that she married Peter 
To be honest though, even though Brian is clearly only with Gillian for her looks, I actually don't mind it too much, because despite being rather clueless, she still seems like a decent, caring person. Despite her stupidity, I feel it's better for Brian to be with her than some spiteful girl who doesn't really care about him at all. At least Gillian does care about him, you can see that. The little subplot of Peter and Lois at the work office was okay, but no more than that. I don't know why Lois tried to fight Peter's demands though, to have sex in the office. We all know she's a bit of a freak deep down. There were a few funny things here too, to help the story out. The bit at the start of Peter and Joe crawling in a race with Herbert's dog was surprisingly funny, as was the big horn guy poking Quagmire's eye out in the cutaway. Season 5, Episode 6, Break Up Your Ears. When Lois discovers that Chris has some bad information about sex, she volunteers to teach a sex ed class at his school, but she upsets people with her honest approach. My best cutaway here was Peter's vow to be as untouched as the turn signal in an Asian woman's car. And my best moment was everyone lining up to snap Stewie out of his screaming. I gave this one a 4 out of 5. This was solid enough. Lois was portrayed as the one in the right for trying to teach the students about safe sex without scaring them. And she was making some good points. She didn't teach it in a perverse way or anything. She even advised at the end that you should wait for the right time. The ear sex craze was kind of weird, but the line, once you go black, you go deaf, was the good one. Meg once again gets screwed out of happiness when her boyfriend leaves her as soon as he sees her naked. It was an okay joke, but honestly, they seem like a decent couple together throughout the episode, so it seems a bit unnecessary. The Stewie Two Fairy subplot was okay. It was the standard Stewie plot, really where his innocent naive baby side meets his cunning evil genius side. That's always interesting enough viewing. The jokes, mainly the cutaways, were the best thing about the episode though. I like the Tetris one with Peter and Bruce, the jab at poor Brittany with her dietitian, and of course the best one and a true classic moment was the Asian lady driver. Sure it was a total stereotype, but damn was it presented in a funny way. Her voice and the pile up behind her. Come on, it's funny stuff. Season 5, Episode 7, Chick Cancer. Stewie's old friend and child actress, Olivia, returns to Quahog. Stewie intends to sabotage her career, but ends up falling in love with her. My best cutaway was the foreign guy at work, who helped Peter understand the sarcasm. And my best moment was Peter trying to get Joe's character to walk in the movie. This one gets a 3 out of 5. Yeah, as far as Stewie plots go, this was nothing special. I guess it was fine to bring Olivia back. The way they tried to treat it as a serious relationship, on one hand, but at the same time had them with toys living in the cardboard house. That was a good little juxtaposition. They actually try to make some real relationship drama out of it, but there's only so much you can do when you're dealing with literal babies. I think the main reason I'm lukewarm on this is that I prefer Stewie to be the one in command of a situation, and have him basically being a simp for Olivia for half the episode was the exact opposite of that. The brief scenes of Peter falling in love and creating his own chick flicks were good, mainly for his over-the-top reactions at the movie theatre and his insistence that Joe must get up and walk to play his character. The cattle prod was one thing, but the crappy edit of Joe running with legs was a hilarious little image. Unfortunately, the cutaways were not the best, which does confine this to a three. The only one of them I enjoyed was the overly enthusiastic, sarcastic guy who makes an unexpected second appearance in the episode, watching Peter's movie. Season 5, Episode 8, Barely Legal. After Brian takes Meg to prom, she becomes obsessed with him. Meanwhile, Peter and his friends become police officers. My best cutaway was Lois finding out Brian ate bubblegum out of the garbage. And my best moment overall was Brian's verbal beatdown on Connie. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. 
I expected to like this a lot more. The first half has some nice moments between Brian and Meg. Sure, Brian is kind of pressured into taking Meg to the dance because she threatened to kill herself, but still, that scene was damn funny with Brian's oh and Meg's crying. Brian sticking up for Meg against Connie is also great because what he said clearly hit a nerve as Connie ran off crying, knowing there is a lot of proof to her being basically a bully and a whore. After that though, things get a little weird. I mean, a drunk Brian making out with Meg is one thing, but Meg becoming a totally deranged psychopath who kidnaps Brian is quite another. I was actually happy for her and sympathising with her struggles earlier on in the episode, but all of that gets ruined and goes completely out of the window when Family Guy decides to go all cuckoo bananas like it often does. So yeah, while there were good moments, ultimately I think Meg's characterization messed the story up. This wasn't the funniest episode either, although there were a few okay moments. Brian eating the garbage and farting out bubblegum is about as funny as a fart joke is ever going to get, in my opinion. And Quagmire saying, you're not the same giraffe from last night, was a sharp little line. I still wish this was better though, as it had the potential to be. Season 5, Episode 9, Road to Rupert. When the Griffin family have a yard sale, Brian accidentally sells Stewie's teddy bear Rupert. Stewie is so distraught that Brian takes him to Aspen, Colorado to get Rupert back. My best cutaway here was Peter reminiscing about the fun he had with his anvil. And my best moment was Adam West giving Brian and Stewie a ride to Connecticut. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. Despite it being a Road 2 episode, with some of the built-in adventure that comes with that, this still felt very middle of the road to me. Now the main plot did have a warmish feeling to it, just because of Brian being willing to trek across the country with Stewie just to get his teddy bear back. They had some good moments along the way, like them desperately hitching a ride with the completely out of touch Mare West. However, the musical tune, which they do, to get the helicopter was a little long-winded. I mean, it was fine, but by no means was it one of the more memorable musical numbers from Stewie and Brian. The ending of the ski race was again fine, mainly due to Stewie's rocket skis, but it was rendered completely pointless when they just throw tea in a kid's eyes and reclaim Rupert anyway. The subplot had Meg driving Peter around after he lost his license. And it was a bit annoying in my opinion. It's just Peter and his friends taking advantage of Meg and doing her head in basically. The scene where she flips out and beats the guy up was okay, but that beating was better reserved for Peter, to be honest. The ending where Peter says he now respects Meg, but because of peer pressure, is still going to treat her like crap, left a real bad taste in the mouth. I mean, why can't Peter just be honest about it? This attempt at a nice moment actually made Peter seem more unlikable than he already was. So yeah, I was a bit underwhelmed by this. I just liked the subplot, and the main plot had a bit too much filler and not enough jokes. Season 5, Episode 10, Peter's Two Dads. Peter kills his father by accidentally falling on him at a party, only for his mother to tell him that his real biological father is an Irish man. My favourite cutaway here was Stewie meeting the Asian Santa at the mall. And my best moment overall was Peter's drinking contest with his Irish father. This one gets another 3 out of 5. This maybe could have been a 4 if it had been a tad funnier, but as things were, it was just slightly above average. Having Francis die is interesting in that it's the first time on the show that a recurring character has been killed off, and I was never a massive fan of his character, so it wasn't exactly too sad to see him go. The revelation that he was not Peter's real dad was a bit out of the blue, but also comes across as believable. Peter's trip with Brian to Ireland to find his real father was probably the best part of the episode, so you could argue that the story succeeded in that regard. I like how the plane landed with a bunch of beer bottles on the runway, that was one of a few funny Irish themed jokes, 
along with the two guys circling each other, and the sheep version of Brian. The drinking contest was a fitting way for Peter to convince the guy that he was his son, and the ending message was good. I like the fact that Brian reminded Peter that Francis was the one who raised him, so that means that he probably did love him to some extent, even if he never expressed it well. The subplot of Lois slapping Stewie, and Stewie getting some kind of thrill from it, was rather weird. The scene of Stewie imagining himself getting tortured by Lois was odd. It was just odd, what can I say? The cutaways were average, but I did like Stewie getting shafted, as he called it, by the no-nonsense Asian Santa, and Peter getting stuck behind Robert Lozier at the airport. Season 5, Episode 11, Latan Aquatic with Steve Zissou. When a bully begins to harass Chris, Peter goes to his defence, but the kid is so annoying that Peter beats him up. Meanwhile, Stewie gets a tan. My best cutaway was Dick Cheney as a Walmart greeter. And my best moment overall was of course Peter beating up Kyle. This one gets a 5 out of 5. This is one of those episodes for me which, despite not being amazing in any single regard, pretty much everything it did had me interested in some way. And it was very, very funny. Peter's a little character rock throughout the episode when he remembers being bullied as a kid, so tries to stand up against Chris's bully, only for him to be drawn back into the dark side himself, was all interesting stuff. That scene where he beats the absolute crap out of Kyle is great. I don't care about the implications of it. Sure, Kyle is only 13 years old, but it's hard to feel sympathy for him, given how much of a douchebag he is. I also love how Peter started off that scene trying to be a mature adult, but ended it like a five-year-old being told off by their parents. As I said, the ending worked well. Chris being the one to show Peter the error of his bullying ways was a nice touch, and I guess a nice message to end on. Even if it was a message delivered in Family Guy's typical over-the-top way, Stewie's subplot of tanning himself was also decent, especially the bit where he draws a pencil moustache on himself. I suppose I should go through those funny moments I mentioned earlier. I like the intro scene of the gang playing golf, Joe getting annoyed at being asked about his handicap, and Quagmire taking the game super seriously were the highlights. Some of Herbert's lines to Chris and Kyle were great too. As far as the cutaways go, the highlight was Dick Cheney telling customers to go fuck themselves as they enter Walmart. If only politicians like Dick Cheney were that honest about their contempt for the public. But yeah, I was thoroughly entertained by this one overall, so it deserves a 5 in my book. Season 5, Episode 12, Airport 07. Peter goes with Quagmire to work and messes things up, causing Quagmire to lose his job as a pilot. So Peter, Joe and Cleveland devise a plan to get him his job back. My best cutaway was the prom night dumpster babies. And my best moment was Quagmire's pre-flight announcement. This one gets the second 5 out of 5 in a row. The first part of this, when Peter was behaving like a redneck, was okay. There were a few funny bits of how uncomfortable he was making his family. This really gets good though, when we get into Quagmire's job as a pilot. I've always loved that being his job. Not only because it allows for some stories like this, where Quagmire has to talk planes down and save hijacked planes and all that wacky stuff, but also because it gives him an extra dimension. For all of his many flaws, at least he takes his job seriously and is actually incredibly good at it. It always makes me want to root for him whenever he is flying a plane. So above all the other silliness that went into this episode, the core of Quagmire's story was solid and made this a success for me. There were many funny moments here too. His pre-flight announcement was a great piss take of the typical uh, which a lot of airline pilots have a tendency to do in real life. The different reenactments the news do about the plane crash was also great. Not like the media to scare Munger, hey? The prom night dumpster baby song was another classic moment. Despite a dark premise, is very unique, and like all Family Guy songs, it is sung very well. This is one of the more quietly solid episodes of the show for me. 
Season 5, Episode 13, Bill and Peter's Bogus Journey. After Peter helps Bill Clinton out with a flat tyre, they become friends, but Lois starts to think Bill is a bad influence. But when she confronts him, they end up having sex. My best cutaway here was the wannabe writers watching each other at Starbucks. And Bill Clinton dancing to Barbie Girl is an outright classic moment, so it has to be the best. This one gets, say, 4 out of 5. I ended up enjoying this, mostly for the entertainment value. Surprise, surprise. I mean, some of Peter hanging out with Bill Clinton was amusing, especially the bit of him on a dance machine singing Barbie Girl. They really played into Bill Clinton being this sex-crazed maniac, which is probably a fair portrayal, let's be real. Now, Lois sleeping with Bill was quite a sudden turn of events. I can't say that I'm all that surprised, but it did mean that the last third of this was just Lois and Peter trying to rebuild their marriage. You can't ever really take their marriage that seriously though, so I can't say that I was particularly invested in that side of things. At least it worked out in the end, without Peter actually sleeping with Babs, which would have been a disaster all round. The ending joke of Peter going to talk with Bill, only to end up in bed with him himself, is exactly the type of farcical ending this episode demanded. I mean, there's no way you could try and play this straight. In terms of the comedy, this was on the funnier side of average. Outside of Bill shenanigans, some of the cutaways I liked were the pretentious writers needing to be watched and validated at Starbucks, Brian getting the family dead animals as Christmas presents, and Lois and Peter absolutely savaging Stewie's picture. You know, on one hand I hate them for being bad parents, but on the other you almost have to admire how ruthless they were with the insults. I mean, Lois saying Muhammad Ali drew this is just like, wow, it's so brutal. And then literally spitting on a drawing is just one of those scenes that is so over the top, it somehow works. I guess I should also mention that this is the first episode to have the Conway Twitty cutaways. I don't mind a bit of Conway Twitty to be honest, so I'm neutral to those bits normally. Although I am aware of that infamous one, where they literally play a whole song of his. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Season 5, Episode 14, No Meals on Wheels. The Griffins open a restaurant, but have a hard time attracting customers. That is until Joe brings all of his handicapped friends. My best cutaway was Brian and his old roommate reacting to the OJ Simpson verdict. And my favourite moment was Joe and his friends forming the Crippletron. I gave this one a 4 out of 5. Obviously the main character conflict here between Peter and Joe was about as mean spirited as you can get. It does feel a little off. Peter suddenly having such an issue with Joe being handicapped. He's never really brought it up before. I guess you can chalk it up to Peter being unable to resist being a jerk. At least he somewhat learns his lesson in the end after spending a whole 45 minutes in a wheelchair. The main reason I can forgive it though is that the episode had a few great moments. For one, Joe and the other handicapped people being able to turn themselves in to this transformer type entity is kind of sick. I only wish that battle lasted a bit longer. I also liked the bits before they opened the restaurant, mainly due to Peter using his pyjamas as a shock suit. It's so him to get such satisfaction out of irritating his family in the most over the top way. He even managed to piss Brian off worse than when he watched the OJ verdict with his black roommate. I'm sure plenty of arguments like that did happen at the time. Guns pointed and all. This was enjoyable in the end because of the good moments, but the story was not so great. Season 5, Episode 15, Boys Do Cry. Quahog thinks Stewie is possessed, forcing the Griffins to move to Texas. My best cutaway was Brian saying, Texas sucks worse than the WNBA. And my best moment was the Super Devil. This one gets a 3 out of 5. This was essentially a bunch of stereotypes in a row strung together just to make a story. 
The character staff they did try was mainly with Lois and Brian. Lois was liking the Texan community so much that she thought up a lie to keep the family there. While Brian was just going around complaining about the Texans and how superior his politics are to theirs. Again, as I always say, when a character behaves in this way, I don't care whether I agree with them or not. It still comes across as incredibly arrogant. So neither him or Lois were particularly likeable. And the ending bit, where the family leave Texas with the help of Peter's talking horse, was all a bit silly. Despite me not loving the story, there were, as usual, a few nice moments. The stubborn as a mule cutaway was okay, as was the vicious joke at the expense of the WNBA. Seriously, that is one of the more savage roastings ever on the show. Each line in that cutaway was more savage than the previous one. Also, the over-the-top super devil that the media created worked for two reasons. First, because it's obviously a point about how we are always getting fed a new thing to be afraid of, even if there's no real need to be afraid of it at all. Secondly, because of the subversive gag of the super devil actually being real when Brian shoots him out of the sky. Season 5, Episode 16, No Chris Left Behind. Chris gets expelled from James Woods High School for dragging down their test scores and has to ask Carter to get him into an upper class academy. My best cutaway was Carter promising to keep Chris as healthy as a horse, and Carter teasing the orphan by not letting him in the car was my favourite moment. I gave this one a 2 out of 5. The first roughly 3 quarters of this I found incredibly dull. It felt like the most filler filled episode so far. The scenes of Chris getting kicked out of school were stretched out far too long and it took forever to get to the point of Carter getting him in to this prestigious school. It doesn't help that there was a giant chicken fight that went on for over 4 minutes. I don't mind those scenes in small doses but this was too much. Even the scenes of the rich snobs teasing Chris weren't particularly impactful. I struggled to take those types seriously anyway and Chris being the oblivious guy he is, ruins any chance of some emotional moments. At least he does the right thing by his family in the end I suppose. This was well on the way to a possible 1 rating, but the episode packs all its best stuff in the last 5 minutes. Carter agreeing to adopt an orphan child only to drive away after showing him the life he could have. That's so disgustingly evil, but it works for Carter's character. I also like Stewie following fat guys around, including Chris with a tuba, as well as that creepy scene where Herbert demands Carter get into the closet with him. Then again, I guess Carter deserves it after what he did earlier on. The horse shooting the guy who was about to put him down is one of the best cutaways ever in my opinion. The racing tune he sings as he's whipping the guy is just perfect. It's so good that I almost gave the episode a free just off the back of it. But then I remembered back to the rest of this and I can't have one great gag overshadow the majority of the episode. So the two score remains. Season 5, episode 17. It takes a village idiot and I married one. Disgusted by the pollution in the lake, Lois runs for mayor against Adam West. But once in office, she gets corrupted by the power. My best cutaway here was Peter on cocaine and Lois giving short, simple answers to the undecided voters was my favourite moment. This one gets, say, 4 out of 5. This was enjoyable most of the way through, thanks to a good collection of jokes and some decent political and election satire. The opening set piece of the Griffins visiting Quagmire's vacation house while he was still there by the way, threw up your typical amusing quagmire gags. Once we got into the actual story, Mayor West being both corrupt and incompetent is nothing new, so Lois wanting to do the right thing by running for mayor herself, just so she could fix the town's problems, was kind of good to see. They really hammered every angle of the political process here. Firstly, the media, and people on the campaign trail making empty promises, 
then the electorate themselves for not being informed on the issues and gobbling up nonsense answers that was of course the famous scene where lois just answers 9-11 to literally every question and finally of course the politicians themselves get some sledging and lois serves as they stand in for how easy they can become corrupted by power and how that can lead into them being paid off essentially it's a pretty cynical view of politics as a whole but if you've watched my videos you would know that I can't stand mainstream politics, so I have no problem with this approach. I think it's very realistic, to be honest. As mentioned, there were a number of things I found funny here, like Tom Tucker introducing Trisha Takanawa for her slant on the story, or the bee which happens to have Brucey's voice. Season 5, Episode 18, Meet the Quagmires. After asking Death to take him back to 1984, Peter accidentally changes the timeline, so that Lois is married to Quagmire. My best cutaway here was the Jetsons intro, and my best moment was Peter dancing in that iconic scene instead of going to get Lois back. The season finale gets say 4 out of 5. This is by no means the most solid episode of the show, the pacing was a bit bipolar, and there were a few jokes which didn't land, but my god was it one of the more memorable episodes ever. Death is always good to see on this show, and having him kick off this flashback plot was a creative idea. The conflict here was Peter missing a date with Lois, which causes the timeline to change, to one where she gets with Quagmire instead, and ends up marrying him. Of course, this is easily solved given that Peter is given mulligans by death whenever he messes up. But Peter is just relentless in screwing up again and again. You almost have to admire how easily he forgets his task, in the name of having fun. The, and then another, he 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 he, is a pure classic. And Brian's, Peter, after it, was perfectly delivered. The ending was okay, obviously Peter gets Lois back in the end, and we even get a nice rendition of Never Gonna Give You Up by Brian for good measure. Some of the funniest stuff here was the rather unsettling sight of Stewie, Chris and Meg being Quagmire's kids, and of course that classic Jetsons cutaway. I not only appreciate them for actually animating it in Jetsons style, but George's hey 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 no 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 always cracks me up. And good on old George too. He was having none of his money being wasted. So yeah, a very uneven episode, yet still a memorable end to the season. So that's season 5 done, and here is a summary. The overall average score was 3.61, and it's same old, same old really. Quite an even spread of episodes again, and my top 5 were as follows. Meet the Quagmires coming in at 5. It takes a village idiot, and I married one at four. Stewie loves Lois at three. Airport 07 at two. And my favourite of the year was... Latan Aquatic with Steve Zissou. So, what do I have to say about this season? Not as much as normal, really. As I said, it was a bit shorter this time. You ain't seen nothing yet, though, because season six will be all of 12 episodes. It's fine, I could do with a bit of a cool down period on watching Family Guy. In regards to the quality this season produced, it's marginally down from season 4, but not alarmingly so. It's still hovering just over the 3.5 mark, with again, hardly any bad episodes. A lot of good ones, and a few great ones. As far as themes go, this was very similar to season 4. Mostly the family's antics are the cause for conflict. But there is some occasional satire, and the odd experimental episode mixed in. In general though, Family Guy has settled into a groove, and you know what, that works for me. The longer we can stay in this balanced state, the better, because I know some crazy things start happening with the series at some point. I'm going to cut this video here guys, keep an eye out for those Simpsons lists coming in the near future. The fact that the next Family Guy season is so short means that I will have more time to work on them. For now though, goodbye, and as ever, take care.